about the market. We've talked about demand, we've talked about supply. They are separate. But now we need to talk about how demand and supply can interact. That is where we have the market. I get what I'm saying. Demand is separate, supply is separate, but they have to interact. Because if there's no interaction between demand and supply, then there's no, there's no point for demand, there's no point for supply. You get the point. So the interaction between demand and supply brings us to this topic today, which is what market. So I know the market is a point of contact between supply and demand. Buyers. This is the point of interaction between supply and demand. So there's always a point of contact between the individual or the firm that wants to sell and that individual who wants to buy. So where the meat is all about the market, which is what we're we talking about, the interaction between demand and supply or buyers and suppliers. So now we go to the interaction of demand and supply. In any market, the price is set where the wishes of the consumers are matched exactly with those of the producers. So the consumers have the price they want to pay for the product. The producers have a price that they would wish to sell. So the, the price must be set according to the wishes of the consumers. If not, consumers are not going to buy. Do you get the point? Remember that in the law of demand, we said the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. We talked about that, right? So what, what does it really imply? It really implies that consumers are conscious of price. They, they think more about price. So that is why, whenever you buy something, the first thing your friend will ask about from you is what? The price. Because we are so conscious of it. Do we get the point? Yes. So, in the market, there's always going to be what we call what equilibrium price. Where the price matched with the wishes of the consumers. Who sets the price? The business. But they have to set the price to the, to the extent that it's going to match what consumers can afford to pay. Do we understand? Do we, okay, do we get it or not? Yes. Are you here? Do you understand or not? No. Then sit for right, sit for right. There's a market. In that market, we have consumers, we have suppliers. So suppliers will set the price, not consumers. Yeah. But whenever consumers, suppliers are setting the price, they have to set it that in a, in a way that it will match the wishes of consumers. Because there's a law of, law of demand. So whatever price consumers are, suppliers are setting, they have to set it in a way that it will be affordable for consumers. That's what we're talking about. So if the price becomes affordable for consumers, then we're talking about equilibrium price. Like, there is the trick uh, that they give us like... No, not trick. There's nothing like trick. Here. Like, they do for like you know, no, that is pricing strategy. We're not talking about pricing strategy. There are different price strategy. Well, that's the they try to convince the consumer. No, they are not. They are setting the price. They are not trying to trick. There's no, this is not a strategy. It they're is a decision. They're putting in the, uh, in they are putting a price that will meet or fit in what consumers can pay. Right. It's not about trick. The Goldilocks doesn't want to. Do you get it now? We have what we call equilibrium price. So for equilibrium price, what does it imply? It means that the quantity demanded for that product and the quantity supplied in that market has matched. 